Hello. This week I want to talk about facial recognition. Facial recognition is a technology that allows a machine to recognize your face. But of course it's doing even more than just recognizing your face. It's also recognizing your identity and it's recognizing your state of emotions and it is recognizing your location. This is a very controversial technology, but I believe it is an inevitable outcome that will become ubiquitous in most of our lives, in most of the world. And to make it work, we're going to have to invent many new protocols, social norms, legal infrastructure to make it work. The way facial recognition operates is that it recognizes your face from among all the other faces of humans by understanding what the patterns are. In fact, it recognizes your face in the same way that I would recognize your face or that you recognize my face. For the same reasons that I can see who you are, the same subtle clues of your eye color, your eye spacing, the shape of your mouth, are exactly what the computer does. The thing about faces is that they are at once the most personal thing that we have and the most public thing that we have. So it's a very rare and weird combination of being personal and private at the same time. There's nothing that is so much you as your face and there's nothing as public about you as your face. So we have mixed emotions about our faces. They are who we are, and yet they are the thing that we display to everybody else. It's how other people recognize us. In our innermost thoughts, they first recognize our face. So because of this power, facial recognition is a very intimate problem, an intimate issue to us. I think that facial recognition is also going to be combined with other technologies called biometrics, where we're measuring our body and we're using it for the same reasons that we use our faces. So we recognize each other, not just through our faces, but also through hair color, body shape, how we walk, our voices, the sound of our voice. It turns out that there's probably 25, 30 different parameters that are unique to each of us individually that can be recognized. And when we combine them together, we get a person. So we can often recognize friends way down the street as they're walking towards us because they have a, everybody has a very unique gait in how they walk. They have a body language, how they use their arms. As they come closer, we can see more of them, their faces, their body build, the kind of clothes they wear, and ultimately their faces and then their voices. It's very, very difficult to fake all of those. It's not difficult to maybe fake one aspect of those. You can maybe fake someone's fingerprints or you could find some way out around using their fingerprints. You might be able to find some way to fake someone's voice. You might be able to find someone to fake someone's iris or eye color. But it's very, very difficult to fake all those things at once, which means that using these biometric parameters, this biometric signature to identify people is really reliable because that's what we use. We use the same combination of all these things. You might encounter someone else who looks a little bit like your friend, maybe exactly, but their voice is different or their body language is different. If you met someone who looked exactly like your friend, who had exactly had their voice, who had their body moment or movements and whose clothing was the same, you would be warranted to believe that that was the same person. So we're going to use these technologies in concerts with many different biometric measurements, which will give us a pretty reliable indication that that person is the person that we saw last time. So 
Facial recognition is going to be used in many devices, um, such as our phones, which will recognize us, such as our doorbells or, or locks on our houses, which can recognize us, or the car, which can recognize us. And just as we have learned to recognize people in many different situations, maybe after they've just gotten up, maybe when they have a cold, maybe when it's dark out, maybe as they get older, I think the AI will also begin to be able to recognize people in many different conditions. The facial recognition technology today often doesn't work well, and that is often most of the cause for not trusting it. It's because it's not very reliable all the time. And a lot of the concerns that we have about facial rec recognition come because it doesn't work perfectly. But over time, this technology would rapidly get better and it will become even better than humans at recognizing other people. And it's when it becomes really good that we want to kind of think about it because it's going to be able to recognize even uh, other people that we as humans would have difficulty recognizing. So it's going to be fairly reliable in terms of being able to recognize a person in many different attributes, many different episodes of their life, many different conditions, many different lighting conditions. The important thing about facial recognition is that it's not just recognizing our identity. It will also be capable of recognizing our emotions, whether we are angry, whether we are distraught, whether we are perplexed, whether we are happy, whether we are engaged. The full range that, that we could detect in a friend, when we see a friend, we can kind of tell almost right off the bat their mood, what they're about. And this technology will also be able to recognize that aspect of us. It will be able to see what our mood is, whether we're engaged or not. And that kind of um, technology is going to be um, exploited and used in many different ways. If we're unlucky, it would only be used for marketing purposes, but there are many ways you could use for health reasons. There are many ways that we could actually use it to give us better experiences. When we're bored, it can redirect us in certain directions. Um, it is um, going to be used in the VR mirror world, AR mirror world, where we can actually, it can, the facial recognition can tell where we're looking, what we're going to look at, where our attention is. That's also very useful in trying to make an experience. It's also useful in trying to do work where we're trying to go somewhere and we were looking in certain directions and it can understand where we're going. So it's not just our ID, our identity, it's not just our emotions, it's also our activity, or our, our engagement. You can also detect that. Now, one of the things about facial recognition is that it is not just about recognizing us, but the concern and our, and our worry about it is about it remembering all these things, right? So, so it can recognize us that we're somewhere but it can also, the technology itself, the system will remember that we were there. And so that sense of being tracked is the most concerning aspect of facial recognition. It's not just that we can be identified, it's just that we can be tracked. And with that end, as I mentioned, a facial recognition technology, our faces are the most personal thing we have and the most public. There is a distinction about recognizing us in private and recognizing us in public. And it's very, very possible that we actually come to agree as a society that there may be certain no recognition zones or no tracking zones where, like say the wilderness, where we aren't gonna have this technology. So there are some places where we don't have to think about the fact that we're being tracked and there's a history of how we look and what we think and our mood. So. It may even be in certain public areas where we have agreement that there isn't going to be tracking of us, monitoring of our faces in that area. We also have another question about whether we are allowed to hide. 
if we can walk out, and if as soon as we walk outside into the public, if the understanding is is that we are totally trackable and our faces are recognized, um, that may dissuade us from walking outside all the time. We may want to have certain areas where we can wear a mask or some kind of a filter that would disguise us, makeup, who knows. Um, and there may be other areas where we just agree that we're not going to operate the facial recognition because we don't want that constant surveillance. There may be other ways in which we can come to agreement where there's something in between where maybe certain areas of the public you have to agree to be have your face recognized, where other areas is going to be optional. Like if you walk into a store, maybe the store recognizes this, maybe it doesn't. Maybe the store, maybe some stores advertise the fact that they don't recognize you or follow you or track you, and others are going to in order to maybe do Amazon retailing where you don't have to pay for things, you just walk out. It recognizes who you are, you, you pick what you want, you walk out, it charges you. So I suspect that there might be a variety of conditions and agreements on this where some areas are not tracked, not recognized, and other areas are mandatory where you have to agree to have your face tracked. And I think over time this will be a negotiation where, again, different cities, different stores, different neighborhoods will have different attitudes and there'll be postings or there'll be notifications. Oh, you're entering into an area where you have to agree to have your face recognized and tracked. Okay, and so um, I think it's not going to be a single universal policy that there'll be many different varieties depending on what people are trying to achieve. So um, even in places like wilderness, one of the attractions a wilderness might have is the fact that there aren't cameras there for the most part. And that, again, might be something that is a reason why people go to spend a weekend because they're out of that system. They're into the trees where there is maybe by law, just as there are like no drones, there may be no cameras in that area. So um, facial recognition, I, when I say it will be ubiquitous, I mean that at some point in your life, everybody will confront this. It won't be all the places, it won't be everywhere, it won't be all the time, but it'll certainly be something that we'll probably encounter most days, most places. And the conditions under which we are recognized, how deep that recognition goes, whether our behavior, our mood, our inner thoughts can be monitored and watched and recognized, will also, I think, vary depending on um, that location that we're going to. And it'll be a constant negotiation, a constant social etiquette and a, and a social education. We have to understand when you go on to this public area in a city, you're going to be noticed. You're going to be recognized. If you go to your friend's home, they won't recognize you. So, um, except analog. So I think um, this topic, this, this variable, will become part of social knowledge, part of tech literacy, part of the, of the cultural norm that will just educate ourselves as we go into the future. And that's what I think about facial recognition.